Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to discuss one of the MCU's most surprising moves yet, bringing back Robert Downey Jr., but this time as Dr. Victor Van Doom. Marvel's top hero is set to return as its biggest villain. Risky, genius, you tell us. MCU hyped Kang as the most dangerous villain after Ant-Man 3. But after he was fired, they decided to cancel the movie Avengers The Kang Dynasty. Now they had to announce new movies, especially in the aftermath of Ant-Man 3, which did not live up to expectations. So MCU announced Fantastic Four and they had to bring the villain from that storyline. So in the recent San Diego Comic-Con, MCU decided to show their future projects. And they announced their most ambitious projects after the Avengers Endgame, the two movies which they now believe can save the MCU as we know it. And to direct these movies, they have brought back the famous director duo, the Russo Brothers. Russo Brothers first talk about Avengers Secret Wars. Uh, and it's the biggest story that Marvel Comics ever told. It's the first comic book run that I read as a kid that made me fall in love with comics. It's the reason that Ant and I are standing up here. The Russo Brothers believe that they are done with the MCU and it was the end of the road for them once Avengers Endgame was done. They have already emptied their emotions, energy, and love through all these years with MCU. Because we had put all of our passion, all our love, all our imagination into the Winter Soldier, into Civil War, into Infinity War, climaxing all of it with Avengers Endgame. Now, let's start by talking about RDJ's legacy. Tony Stark's journey as Iron Man is both a story of transformation and a profound exploration of power and responsibility. Introduced as a billionaire with a seemingly invulnerable exterior, Stark's life changes when he confronts the impact of his own technology on the world. Captured and critically wounded, he creates his first Iron Man suit as a means of escape, marking the birth of Iron Man and his commitment to a higher purpose. From that point, he's driven to protect humanity, battling both external threats and his inner demons. I am Iron Man. Throughout the MCU, Stark's arc is defined by his evolution from self-centered playboy to a self-sacrificing hero. He continually faces personal losses and moral dilemmas, from losing loved ones to the weight of protecting the entire universe. Saved us. His ultimate sacrifice in Endgame, laying down his life to defeat Thanos and save countless Iron others, Man cements his legacy as an irreplaceable hero. Iron Man had a perfect arc, and he rests in peace within all his fans as a hero. So why bring RDJ as a villain? Why not introduce Doctor Doom with a fresh face, an actor who could really sink into the character without any Iron Man baggage? It's possible that Marvel wants to tie its fans to Doom emotionally, with a familiar face leading us into a whole new level of villainy. Or maybe they just wanted a surefire way to sell tickets in a post-Endgame world. Definitely, MCU and Russo Brothers said that it is the might of the actor that RDJ is, that only he can play the complex character of Doctor Doom is why they brought him back. This is also backed by the fact that RDJ won an Oscar for his character in Oppenheimer. As proof of the unimaginable possibilities in the Marvel multi-universe, to to do Secret Wars justice, we give you the one person who could play Victor Von Doom. Let's dive into the possibilities here. Imagine, just for a second, that Marvel decided to go with a truly fresh face for Doctor Doom, someone with an intense, mysterious vibe. Imagine an actor who could sink deep into Doom's dark, complex persona without any hints of Tony Stark lingering in every scene. What if they went for someone unexpected, even a name that might surprise you? There's Killian Murphy, who's made his mark with characters you love to hate, bringing an eerie, quiet intensity. He's practically built for a role like Doom. Or even Mads Mikkelsen, who already has a Marvel history but brings that cold, calculating presence perfectly suited for Doom's unrelenting ambition. But my 100 cents are on one actor whom fans have long speculated to see as Iron Man, even if it is in some alternate reality in the multiverse. Any guesses? Yes, my friends, I am talking about Tom Cruise, who has been at the top of that demand list. Imagine if he turned that intensity toward Doctor Doom. He has that edge. 
that ability to play a character both intimidating and charming. Who knows, fans might have had even louder cheers for him during the Comic-Con. The casting could completely change the energy and direction of Doctor Doom's introduction. What more, he certainly can bring the money and audience back to the MCU. Let's be real. Casting RDJ as Doctor Doom is a massive gamble. This choice could blur the line between hero and villain in a way that pulls audiences out of the story, creating a mental tug of war as viewers try to separate Tony Stark from the face of Doctor Doom. Marvel's banking on RDJ's fan base to support this shift, but there's a risk that fans will see Stark's redemption arc shadowing Doom's menace, and that could make him the world's most distracting villain rather than its most terrifying. There's also the question of how Marvel plans to honor both Doom and Stark. The arrogance and brilliance that define Tony Stark would need to scale up to do Doom justice. Tony's sacrifice during the battle with Thanos marked one of the MCU's most powerful moments, and reintroducing him, even as a variant, risks cheapening that impact. Doom demands an intelligence and gravitas on another level, anything less, and Marvel risk is diluting two of its most iconic characters at once. But I also think it could be a success, as RDJ said doing Comic-Con. New mask. Same task. Imagine Peter Parker standing face to face against a galactic threat, one that bears the face of his fallen mentor. Tony's death already loomed over Spider-Man far from home, and bringing RDJ back as Doom could mean Parker's worst fears manifesting. This isn't just a fight against a Thanos-level threat. It's a deeply personal conflict for Parker, and one that could beautifully layer the MCU with new tension. And let's not overlook the potential to explore a darker, untamed side of Tony Stark. Imagine the twist if we got to see a version of Stark who never turned away from being a weapons dealer, who never experienced that pivotal change in the cave. An alternate Tony, brilliant, ruthless, yet unrefined, would make for a Doctor Doom that's complex and chilling. This version of RDJ could deliver something far beyond his previous MCU performances. It obviously sounds like a what-if scenario brought to life in the main timeline, letting us witness a universe where Stark's genius becomes Earth's undoing rather than its salvation. What can I tell you? I like playing complicated characters. With that, he left plenty to the imagination. One thing's for sure. Marvel has a lot of work to convince fans that this was the right move. So, there you have it, folks. Is Marvel making a bold, smart move, or is it too much too soon? Let's hear what you think. Hit that like button if you think RDJ could make this work, and leave a comment if you've got other casting ideas. And hey, if you want more such content, smash that subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you never miss a single beyond-the-scenes breakdown.